Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me pretty well? Okay, I got a good nod and thumbs up. Uh, where were y'all to? 548. 548. Uh, we're going to start out with the lily of the valley this morning. Uh, we'll send, uh, like I said, you can follow along on the AIM app. Most of the songs are on the Adventures and Ministry app. If you haven't gotten it, it's on Apple Store and Google Play. Uh, it's Adventures in Ministry, and it has most of the songs that we sing. I have found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. The fairest of ten thousand to my soul. The lily of the valley. All I need to cleanse and make me fully whole. In sorrow he's my comfort, in trouble he's my stay. He tells me every care on him to roll. He's the lily of the valley, the burning morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He will never, never leave me, nor yet forsake me here, while I live my faith into His blessed will. A wall of fire about me, I've nothing now to fear. With this man, I will In sweeping up in glory, you see His blessed face. Where rivers of delight shall ever roll. He's the lily of the valley, the morning morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. Uh, 560. Living by faith will be for our scripture reading this morning. Living by faith. I care not today what tomorrow may bring, if shadow or sunshine or rain. The Lord I know will with or everything, and all of my will be His name. Living by faith in Jesus above. Trusting, confiding in His great love. From all heart safe and sheltering on. I'm living by faith and feel no one. Our Lord will return to this earth some sweet day. Our troubles will then all be old. The Master so gently will lead us away beyond that blessed heavenly shore. Living by faith in Jesus above, trusting, confiding. From all home safe and sheltering all, I'm living by faith and feel no reading this morning will be coming from Romans chapter 12 beginning in verse 17 Romans 12 starting in verse 17 never pay back evil for evil to anyone respect what is right in the sight of all men if possible 
so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. Never take your own revenge, beloved, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will pay, saith the Lord. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will be heaping burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Let's pray together. Our kind Heavenly Father, as we come before your presence this morning, we realize, Father, that our country is hurting, not only due to the virus, Father, but unrest in our country. And we pray, Father, for peace. We pray for your help your encouragement to us father we pray that we would do what is taught in your word that we will not seek vengeance but we will seek peace and we will try to do good to all men as you instruct us to do father but father we do realize that we sin that we fail you give us the courage and the strength to do that which is right father that we might be pleasing to you Brother Eric, as he breaks the word to us this morning, may it touch us, may it motivate us, may it direct us to do what is right. Pray, Father, for those that are sick, for those that are hurting, especially those of the household of faith. We pray for Pam, we pray for Sister Moses, we pray for Pat, we pray for uh, Richard Sparkman, Father, and Ralph. Father, it's all so many that's sick and having trouble. We just pray your blessing on all men. We thank you, Father, again for the gospel. We thank you for Jesus. And, Father, we just pray you will forgive us. Give us strength to be the people you want us to be. Go with us through this service, Father. And may we so live, Father, when he come to end of our road, that you will welcome us home. For we beg it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Mike, 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 Mike. No, no, it's still clip, man. Is everybody still laughing? I'm thinking. We will glorify. We will glorify. We'll sing first, second, and the last. Uh, we will glorify. We will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the Lamb. We will glorify the Lord of Lords, who is the Great I Am. Lord Jehovah. We will bow before His throne. We will worship Him in righteousness. We will worship Him alone. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lord of Lords. Song for the Lord Supper this morning is going to be Ten Thousand Angels. Let's 
still sing the first and last 10,000 angels. They bound the hands of Jesus in the garden where he prayed. They led him through the streets in shame. They spat upon the Savior so pure and free from sin. They said, Crucify him, he is to blame. He could have called 10,000 angels to destroy the world and set him free. He could have called 10,000 angels, but he died alone for you and me. To the howling mob he yielded, he did not for mercy cry. The cross of shame he took alone, and when he cried his finished, he gave himself to die. Salvation's wondrous plan was done. He could have come ten thousand angels to destroy the world and set him free. He could have come ten thousand angels, but he died alone for you and me. I'm not sure about you. I know in my mind as we were just singing that song and thinking about what we are about to do, how simple it could have been for Jesus to say, I'm not putting up with this. I'm not going to tolerate this. I'm not going to be treated in such a way. And he could have called one angel or 10,000, as many as he wanted to, and had man wiped away. But as we just read and sang, he took the cross of shame and he buried it alone. Why would he do such a thing for you and for me? Each and every Lord's Day, when God's people are gathered together, Jesus asks His request, As often as you gather together, take this bread which represents my body and break it in remembrance of me. And then He took the cup and said, As often as you eat this bread, take this cup and drink it as it represents a new covenant, as it represents the blood of Jesus Christ. And each and every Lord's Day, as we gather together, we observe what Jesus did for us. I know there's a lot going on. I know there's a lot of uncertainty. I know there might be things that can distract us. But I ask each and every one of us right now, let's focus our minds and prepare our minds on what we are about to do as we remember the Lord's death until He comes again. Will you pray with me? Father God, we come to You this morning so grateful and appreciative and thankful that Jesus went to that cross for us that He gave Himself on that cross, that He asked us to take this bread which represents His body and 
that was broken on that cross for us. Father, we ask now as we partake of it, we prepare our minds and we partake of it in a manner well-pleasing to you. We thank you so much for your Son, Jesus. It's through him we pray. Amen. bow with me one more time. Dear Lord, our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, and we ask that you bless this fruit of the vine, which represents your Son's blood that was shed upon that cross at Calvary, so we might have a home in heaven with you, with no suffering, no pain, and no tears one day, and maybe we can all answer when that roll is called. Lord, we ask that whoever take this, take it from a manner that's well pleasing in your sight, all this we ask in Christ's precious name. Skies above you are gray, and you are feeling so blue. If your cares and burdens seem great, all the whole day through, there's a silver lining that shines in the heavenly land. Look by faith and see it, my friend, trust in his promises, friend. Sing and be happy, press. On to the goal, trust Him who leads you, He will keep your soul. Let all be faithful, look to Him and pray. Lift your voice and praise Him with soul. Sing and be happy today. Off we fail to see the rainbow up in heaven. When it seems the fortune of earth found and passes by, there are things we know that are worth more than silver and gold. If we hope and trust in each day, we shall have pleasures untold. Sing and be happy and press on to the goal. Trust in who leads you, he will keep your soul and all to be faithful, look to him and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song, sing and be happy today. Give me the Bible. Give me the Bible, store of gladness, gleaming to cheer a wandering, lone and tempted tall. No soul can hide that radiant, peaceful gleaming. Since Jesus came to seek and save the lost, give me the Bible. Shining, my life shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combine, till I shall vanish in eternal day. Give me the Bible, lamp of life immortal, hold up that splendor by the open grave. Show me the light from heaven's shining portal. 
after the lesson is going to be I'm saying the number for Austin because I know he's got his book 916, what a day that will be Good Sunday morning, everyone. What a blessing it is to see each and every one of you joining us in our parking lot this morning to see our friends and family join us virtually on our Facebook page. We welcome each and every one of you, and we're so glad that you've taken time to set aside all the things going on in life and come together this morning and let us worship God. And while we're worshiping God, we want to be reminded of what God has done for us, and we want to take some time to open God's Word and study God's Word together this morning. I would like to also mention before we begin, I usually would have a PowerPoint, but we do not have that capability. Well, you do, but you can't see it very well. But if you would like to follow along and you would like to Look at our notes. They're in three ways. They're on our member page, they're on our Facebook page, and they're also on the YouVersion Bible app. The YouVersion Bible app. And how that works is you click the Bible app, you look for Christville Church of Christ, you go to events, it's a button that says events, you look up Christville Church of Christ, and then you look for today's date, and you will see our lesson notes there this morning this morning I want to talk about something that's very important to us something that I thought would be necessary something I thought would be beneficial I pray this message blesses you I pray this message encourage you maybe this message will challenge you and if it does I want you to know I'm not pointing fingers I'm not passing judgment I'm wanting you to be the best person you can be. And the reason I'm wanting you to be the best person you can be is because I'm trying to be the best person I can be. And I'm trying to be the best Christian I can be. And I want to encourage all of us to be the best Christians we can be. To be the best church we can be. To be the best God's people we can be. So this morning I might be a little more stern than you're used to. But I want you to know it's in love. And I want you to know that I felt something it was worth saying. And if you want to share your ideas with me, or if you feel different, you're welcome to, to share those thoughts. But I wanted to tell you that this morning because we're going to be reading something that might be difficult for us. We're going to be reading something that might challenge our lives and challenge the way we know things and challenge the way we've done things. And sometimes... That's okay. Because sometimes I need to realize I need to make a change. If it's not working out, there's no need to keep doing it. You may have heard of a really smart guy. His name was Albert Einstein. And Albert Einstein came up with a quote. He said, To do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result that is known as insanity. Now that's what Einstein said. He was supposed to be a smart guy, probably smarter than I am. But he said to do something over and over and expect something different to happen is insanity. I don't know about you. I'm a bit of a media junkie, if you will. I like to watch what's going on in the world. I like to watch the news. 
mainly to see what kind of weather we're going to have. But I like to see what's going on in the world. But I tell you, last night, I couldn't hardly bear to see it. Last night, I, I couldn't hardly stand to watch it. I don't know. You might can tell me. I don't know when we thought to treat people the way we've been treating people is okay. I don't know where we went wrong. I don't know to act the way we've been acting towards one another. How that's acceptable, I, don't, I can't stand to see it. Because that's not what Jesus said. And that's certainly not how we are to act if we're going to claim to be one of Jesus' people. I don't know where we went so wrong. As I said, I couldn't hardly bear to watch to see people being hateful to one another and see people treating the way people were treating one another and think that's okay. The title of our lesson this morning is Two Wrongs do not make a right. Two wrongs do not make a right. A father and a child were walking down the road one day. And they heard this awful noise, this shrill, faint noise. And it sounded as if it was an animal crying out for help. And they looked over and it was a, a brush pile and it looked like a, a den where a mother had dug maybe to have some puppies and sure enough it was a hole but the mother wasn't there and it was two puppies in that hole that had been abandoned and so the child looked at the father and said can we take them home now how could that father say no to two cute little puppies and a precious little child and so the father caved in and said yeah we'll take them home and so they took the two puppies home and they began to feed the puppies and spend time with the puppies and he looked at one of the puppies and as they were feeding him one day the child looked at the father and said which one will grow bigger? Which one will grow the fastest? Which one will grow more? And the father replied the one you feed more will grow more. One of the puppies represented hate and fear and discord and envy and jealousy and all these evil things. And one represented love. One represented goodness. One represented kindness. One represented things fruitful, things worthy. Which one will grow more? The one I feed more. The one I put more effort into. If I want to be angry at my brother, sister, people I don't like, that's how I'll live. But if I want to be kind and I want to love people and I want to show them who Christ is, and I feed that one, that's how, who I'll be. And that's the one that will grow the most. That's the one that will be the most productive. The one I pay the most attention to. Two wrongs do not make a right. Somebody got the better advantage of me, so I'm going to go get even. Now, y'all know what Jesus said, don't you? Did Jesus say get even? I don't think so. Not my Jesus. He said, don't get even. He said, if you need something, you try to help him. We're going to read about that. Brother Henry read about for us earlier in the book of Romans. We're going to read about what Jesus said about getting even, getting squared up with somebody. Two wrongs don't make a right. If you have your Bibles, join me in the book of Matthew. Chapter 26. The book of Matthew, chapter 26. We're going to be reading a story here about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And what goes on in Matthew 26 is something very profound. 
something that is very unusual. Matthew chapter 26. This may be a story that you're familiar with. We're going to be reading about a man named Judas. Judas Iscariot. And Judas is pretty well known because he was what? Judas is well known because he was the one who betrayed Jesus, right? And isn't that how we know Judas? We remember the bad guy. <laughs> we remember the one who done wrong. So Judas is pretty well known as the one who betrayed Jesus. But there's also somebody else who's well known in the Bible and the New Testament. And his name's Peter. Now we know Peter, right? Peter's the first one in line, right? When they're having the fellowship meal, Peter's probably first. And Peter has what some people call a foot-shaped mouth. You know what a foot-shaped mouth is, right? Peter's always getting ahead of himself. And he's saying things he don't need to say. So we know Peter. But guess what? We know Judas betrayed Jesus. This morning we're going to remind ourselves and study in Matthew chapter 26, Peter also betrayed Jesus. Now we don't remember Peter's as much because we're going to see what Peter did and what Judas did. Two wrongs do not make a right, friends. They were both in the wrong. They both went against Jesus. One of them took responsibility and the other one didn't. Let's read in Matthew chapter 26, beginning in verse 14. Matthew chapter 26, verses 14 through 16. Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What are you willing to give me if I deliver him to you? And they counted out to him thirty pieces of silver. So from that time he sought opportunity to betray him. Which puppy will grow more than one I feed more? Judas says, what will you give me to betray him? Thirty pieces of silver. And the Bible says, Judas sought opportunity. Do you know what it means to sought opportunity? <laughs> You see the villain sitting in his chair stroking his furry white cat and he's saying, here's my chance. Here's my shot. Seeking opportunity to betray the Lord Jesus. Judas set up in his mind that he was going to do something wrong. Jesus, or Judas fed that thought that he would betray Jesus and that thought capulated him. That thought controlled his mind. The Bible says we as Christians are to bring every thought into captivity. Though it may be bad, I can't let it control me. Judas, let it control him. And Judas saw the opportunity. Let's jump down to verse 31 of Matthew 26. Verse 31 of Matthew chapter 26 through verses 35. Then Jesus said to them, All of you, all of you, will be made to stumble because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have been raised, I will go before you to Galilee and Peter said to him, Even if all are made to stumble, I will never be made to stumble. And Jesus said to him, I say to you this night, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, If I have to die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all of the disciples, Do you have a best friend? Somebody that has no judgment? Whatever life throws at you, 
and whatever situation you're in, they're there for you, and they understand you, and they're there to go through it with you, and they don't have judgment, and, and you don't have to be something you're not. They're just your friend. And you trust and confide in that person. Jesus had 12 men like this. They were known as the 12 apostles. And Jesus said, I can tell these men what's going to happen. And these men should be prepared. These men will be ready. And they'll have my back. Now we remember Judas betrayed Jesus. And Peter betrayed Jesus. Jesus. I don't know who Jesus is. But Peter betrayed Jesus. And then Jesus says here in verse 31, All of you. You see that? Do you notice that? Y'all still with me? Y'all see that? All of you will be made to stumble because of me this night. Not just Judas, not just Peter. All twelve, when the Romans come and take Jesus, they're scattered. Poof, gone. All of them. And Peter is so bold. Here's, here's part of sticking his mouth in his foot. Not me, Jesus. I won't do it. They might. Everybody else might. I won't, Jesus. You can count on me. I'll be there. And Jesus looks at Peter and says, You'll be one of the first ones. And you won't do it one time. You'll do it three times. Now let's not be so hard on old Peter. Because how many times do I say, Lord, I'll do it. Here I am, Lord, I'll live for you, Lord. And then I get an opportunity. <laughs> you mean them? You, you mean these people? Jesus People I disagree with, people I don't like, people that don't think like me, people that don't look like me, people that don't live like me, you mean them? Let's not be so hard on old Peter. I'll stand for you, Jesus. I'll stand for you. Go on to verse 47. Matthew chapter 26 and verse 47. And while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, with a great multitude with swords and clubs, came from the chief priests and elders of the people. And his betrayer had given them a sign, saying, Whoever I kiss, he is the one to seize him. And he went up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. And Jesus said to him, Friend, why have you come? And then they came and laid their hands on Jesus. And suddenly one of those who were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. But Jesus said to him, Put your sword in its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot now pray to my Father and He will provide me with more than twelve legions of angels? How then could the Scriptures be fulfilled that it must happen? And in that hour Jesus said to the multitudes, Have you come out as a robber with swords and clubs to take me? I sat daily with you, teaching in the temple, and you did not seize me. But all this was done that the Scriptures might be fulfilled. The Roman soldiers marching in to take Jesus. 
these are soldiers that have been battle tested. These are soldiers carrying armor and weapons. And, and they're used to fighting. And they're coming in to intimidate Jesus. And they say, are you going to fight all of us, Jesus? Now, you may not realize, sometimes the Bible has some humor. And I think Jesus, at least in my head, was being a bit humorous in his response. And Jesus said, you think these soldiers are something? I could call 12 legions of angels right now and zap all of you. But Jesus had a mission. Jesus had a purpose. Jesus stuck to task. And he says, God expects me to do this. And the scripture must be fulfilled. So yes, these soldiers are powerful, but friends, Jesus was more powerful. And in that moment, he restrained all of that power. Because he did what was right. In that moment, Jesus could have gotten even. In that moment, Jesus could have done something profound and Jesus could have gotten even with all of them. He'd been betrayed by Judas already. He's about to be betrayed by Peter. But Jesus did what was right. Because he who set, He's who set the standard. He's who we follow. And He's who we obey. And He's who we pattern our life after. So though everybody else was doing wrong, Jesus in that moment did what was right. Now I didn't finish the verse. Then all the disciples did what? Forsook Him and fled. I'll be with you, Jesus. Put me to the test, Jesus. Let me go to bat for you. Then all the disciples fled. Verses 69 through 75 of Matthew chapter 26. Verses 69 through 75. Now Peter sat outside in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him saying, You were with this Jesus of Galilee. But he denied it before them all, saying, I do not know what you are saying. And when he had gone out to the gateway, another girl saw him, and said to those who were there, This fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. But again he denied with those, saying, I do not know the man. And a little later those who stood by came up to Peter and said, You are one of them. Your speech betrays you. And he began to curse and swear, saying, I don't know the man. And then a rooster crowed. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus who said, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. You ever have that moment when it clicks? And you say, oh, I get it. It makes sense to me. I don't know the man. You were with him. No, I don't know him. Yes, you talk like him. You dress like him. You were with him. No, I don't know him. 
I thought I was about to make a rooster sound, didn't you? Well, I'm not going to do that. But then the rooster crowed. And Peter said, oh no. I'll go to bat for you, Jesus. And just a few short moments later, he denies him three times and the rooster crows. And Jesus says, or Peter says, I didn't do what I said, Jesus. I failed you. And that rattled Peter. That stirred Peter up. He was bothered by what he did. He knew he was in the wrong. And that shook him up. And he went out and wept bitterly. Look what I've done to my Lord. Look what I've done to my God. I failed him. Now that's Peter's story. And we look at Judas's story. Now Peter wept bitterly. Peter was bothered by it. Judas, it's just another business day. I've got 30 pieces of silver. I can go to spend it. I don't think they had Walmart yet. But whatever they spent it on, Judas said, I've got 30 pieces of silver to go spend. Now later, Judas realized what he had done. And he realized what was at stake, and he took those 30 pieces of silver back to the men and he threw it down and they said what is this to us what is this to us you see Peter did wrong but he owned his responsibility and he was saddened and he was sorry that he hurt the Lord and he asked the Lord to forgive him. Judas, on the other hand, also did wrong. But Judas couldn't handle his consequences. Judas couldn't bear what he did. And he let it control his mind. And he let it encapsulate him. And then, he felt sorry for himself moped around and let it control his mind and didn't do anything about it and he perished for it did Judas do wrong? yes did Peter do wrong? yes and I'll even go as far as to say did all of them do wrong? they all left him Did I do wrong? Absolutely. Two wrongs don't make a right. And in that moment when Jesus could have gotten even, when Jesus could have showed his power and could have really shown who he was and could have done anything he wanted to do, Jesus did what was right in that moment. breaks my heart to see people treating the way we've treated each other, to talk about one another the way we talk about one another, to act the way we've talked, we've acted to one another. I'll go to the bat for you, Jesus. Will we? Friends, we have an opportunity each and every day to decide which one we feed. 
to decide which life we're going to live. And if we've chosen to live that life as a Christian, as a New Testament baptized believer, as a child of God, then I have a choice made for me. And that's found in Romans chapter 12, verses 17 through 21. Repay no one for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Do not avenge yourselves, but give place to wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, if my friends the people that agree with me, the people that are on my side are hungry. If your enemy is hungry, you feed him. If he's thirsty, we give him a drink. For in doing so, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. When's the last time we were concerned about somebody lost? When's the last time we were concerned about my friends and neighbors, people that are important to me that don't know God? When was the last time I smiled at somebody? When was the last time I told somebody I appreciate them? When was the last time I showed kindness? If you're tired of seeing the world in the shape it's in, as I am, we don't overcome evil with evil. We overcome evil by doing good, by being God's people. I pray every day that I do what's right for God. I pray every day that I be the person I can be, that I can do what's right, that I can show somebody Christ. And I try my best. And I try to feed the good. I hope you'll join me in that decision. We want to change the world, folks. It starts right here. And it starts with us. And it starts with being tired of all this bad and evil. It starts by doing what God wants us to do. And that's being His people. And putting the devil at bay and putting temptation at bay and doing what God says. Judas did wrong and Peter did wrong and we all do wrong. But those wrongs are forgiven when we stop living the way we're living. That's called repentance. When I realize that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that He can live His life for me and He gave His life for me and I can become his child I have to make that known as confession and then I have to become God's child I have to bury my old man of sin in the grave of baptism and I become a new child of God and I'm raised to walk in newness of life you want to change the world going to be different it starts right now let us sing together what a day 
that will be. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. And I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. And he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. There'll be no sorrows there, no more burdens to bear, no more sickness, no pain, no more parting over there, and forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. And I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day, glorious day that will be. I'd like to thank everybody for coming out today. Thank you to Brother Eric for the lesson. Um, thank all y'all who joined on Facebook Live. Uh, next week we'll be in church, hopefully. Yes, next week we'll be in church. Sir, uh, anything else I'm thinking about?